The James Webb Space Telescope has made a startling discovery on Jupiter that is shaking up the space industry and our understanding of this giant planet. While for decades it was believed that the gas giant was well studied, this groundbreaking discovery presents us with a whole new set of puzzles and raises the question of whether there could even be life on Jupiter. Was everyone else wrong? For many years, NASA's Galileo and Juno probes were considered the pioneers of Jupiter exploration. Both probes brought us closer to the gas giant than ever before. But now it looks like the probes got it wrong. Since the new James Webb telescope has been in operation, the measurement data from the two probes have come under scrutiny. The space industry is trembling. Is it possible that high-tech instruments like Juno and Galileo have made a mistake? We look into the matter. During such an important mission as the search for water molecules in Jupiter's atmosphere, of all things, astonishing inconsistencies occurred. Data from NASA's Juno spacecraft indicated that about 0.25% of the molecules in Jupiter's equatorial atmosphere are pure water. But the data Galileo obtained about Jupiter were already quite different. Galileo's measurement data indicated about 10 times less water than scientists had predicted, and strangely enough, the deeper the probe and its measuring instruments penetrated Jupiter's atmosphere, the more the amounts of water seemed to increase. For years, these measurement differences led to headaches for scientists. Could they have been so wrong? And how could the measurement differences be explained technically? Had the engineers made massive mistakes in the construction of the probes? Were the measuring instruments faulty? JWST will now finally answer these questions and scan Jupiter's atmosphere more precisely than any probe before. Once these new and precise measurement data are available, the search for life in the planet's atmosphere can begin. Because JWST naturally also has the appropriate instruments on board to reliably detect biosignatures in the planet's environment. Perhaps the space industry can still breathe a sigh of relief, because at present, it would also be conceivable that water is variably distributed over the planet and that the measurement differences are explained in this way. Then all probes and measuring instruments would have been right somehow. JWST will change our view of Jupiter forever. During the test phase, NASA scientists pointed the telescope at the planet Jupiter and the discoveries were stunning. Jupiter is very far from Earth, but the actual distance varies constantly. Both planets follow elliptical orbits around the Sun, sometimes getting closer and then moving away from each other. When the two planets are closest to each other, they are still separated by an incredible 588 million kilometers. In this position, Jupiter is very visible on Earth and even shines far brighter in the night sky than our neighboring planet Venus, which is also very visible to the naked eye. Jupiter is so far from the Sun that it takes 11.86 Earth years to complete just one orbit. With a mean radius of 69,911 kilometers, the planet is the largest in the solar system and the heaviest to boot. Jupiter is sometimes called the prevented Sun because signs have been found that the gas giant actually would have had what it takes to become a star. Jupiter probably missed the gravitational pull necessary to initiate nuclear fusion processes by only a few units. If the gas giant had become a star, we would perhaps live in a binary star system today and have two suns in the sky. But who knows whether in this case our Earth would have existed at all as it is today. It's possible the planets in the system would have developed completely differently under the presence of two stars. Jupiter takes up to this day gravitationally an important position in the solar system. Its enormous weight stabilizes the orbit of the smaller inner planets. And finally, Jupiter provides also for the fact that the thousands of asteroids between it and Mars are held in place. Since this massive planet is probably made only of gas, it has a uniform surface. Mountain ranges and canyons are not to be found on Jupiter 
and very probably also no lakes or oceans. But so far, we can't be so sure. Because after all, nobody has looked inside the planet yet. Measurements at Saturn's North Pole once showed that a blue color appeared inside the whirlwind on Jupiter's neighbor. The headlines at the time were that there might be blue skies inside the second largest planet. We don't know if there aren't layers of more solid materials hiding beneath the thick layers of gas and storms somewhere deep below, and if life isn't possible on gas planets after all. The JWST Space Telescope With construction costs of about $10 billion and operating costs of at least $150 million annually, the James Webb Space Telescope is the largest and most expensive space telescope ever built. But the telescope is worth every dollar, according to astronomers. With its 16 honeycomb mirrors, it will look deeper and farther into space than any other telescope before. And the JWST has been designed to look as far back as possible, almost to the Big Bang. The new telescope also has two other important mission goals, the detection of exoplanets and the exploration of our own solar system. Because even here, right on our cosmic doorstep, there is still plenty to discover. Expectations were high and for a long time, NASA and the world were trembling. Would the JWST really live up to these expectations and the incredible effort? After just under a year, this question can already be answered with an unequivocal yes. JWST protects us from asteroids. Observing small, fast-moving objects is a major challenge for astronomers. Among such objects in the cosmos are especially asteroids which represent a not inconsiderable danger for us on Earth. JWST, in addition to all its other excellent features, was designed to better track asteroids. During commissioning, the NASA team used the JWST to track an asteroid called 6481 Tenzing. This chunk of rock resides in the asteroid belt between Mars and Jupiter, moving through space at a maximum speed of 30 meters per second. Presumably, we have the friendly gas giant to thank for the fact that projectiles like 6481 Tenzing don't open up towards Earth more often. Other theories, on the other hand, say that Jupiter is not so friendly after all. During an epoch billions of years ago, it and other gas giants are said to have virtually bombarded Earth and the other inner planets with asteroids. Today, however, Jupiter plays a mainly protective role for our planet. The gas giant even sucks in smaller rocks like a dust sour. This was also felt by the comet Shoemaker-Levy 9 on July 16 and 22, 1994, which was simply sucked in and absorbed by Jupiter's extreme gravity. Thanks to the new technology, we will learn much more about asteroids in the future and understand Jupiter's protective mission even better. Jupiter's New Face Jupiter's pretty, marbled surface, as we now know, is made up entirely of storms that swirl around at such high speeds that terrestrial cyclones seem lame by comparison. Although Jupiter's surface is so agitated, the marbling looks even, almost always the same, when viewed from Earth. Yet we know this is not so. The surfaces change slowly and the cloud bands are in constant upheaval and turbulence. The famous Great Red Spot the largest and strongest single storm on Jupiter's surface has shrunk significantly over the past 300 years. When the striking phenomenon first caught the eye of medieval astronomers, a full three Earth masses would have fit into the spot. Today, it's only one. Thanks to the JWST's large mirrors and powerful instruments, we'll gain entirely new insights into the planet. In August 2022, NASA released this image of the gas giant. The greatly altered color spectrum comes from the various filtering techniques used by the spectrometers aboard the telescope. By masking or emphasizing certain color frequencies, researchers can see temperature distributions as well as altitude differences much better. Of greatest interest after the storms are Jupiter's polar regions in particular. There 
where NASA's Juno spacecraft detected clusters of cyclones. James Webb's spectroscopic data provide much more detailed observations. The all-new data will help determine the planet's winds, cloud particles, exact gas composition, and temperature more accurately than ever before. On the left side of the image, the moon Europa is clearly visible as a dark spot with bright edges. Other visible moons include Thebe and Metis, which appear as small white specks. Also visible are Jupiter's thin rings, taken with JWST's NIRCAM long wave filter. The ring system consists of three parts, a flat main ring, a halo inside the main ring shaped like a convex lens, and another ring outside the main ring. For us on Earth, the rings are not visible to the naked eye because they are made of very fine particles that reflect very little light. Compared to the brightness of the planet, they are virtually invisible, which has been a challenge for astronomers who want to study them. No one knew Jupiter had rings until one of the Voyager probes discovered the fine dust disks in 1979. With the JWST, scientists will soon unlock the mystery of Jupiter's ring system. Another mission target is Jupiter's numerous moons. So far, we only know more details about the largest ones, such as Europa or Ganymede. Europa is currently considered one of the most promising places outside Earth where life could be found. The moon Ganymede is the largest moon in the solar system and even a bit larger than Mercury. Ganymede could harbor a liquid saltwater ocean beneath its thick ice crust, making some form of life likely here as well. It's incredible what new impressions we have of Jupiter alone now, and the JWST photos and novel discoveries will continue for years to come. What do you think about the new high-power telescope? Do you think it's better than older telescopes and probes? Or do you see the JWST as more a technical addition? We'd love to hear your thoughts on the topic and hope you had a great time watching. We'll see you next time at Simply Space.